The rain is not for the sweet. The bread is not for men of understanding. But time and chance is happening in the world. It's all about God. It's all about what God can do in your life that matters. Don't overestimate yourself. I look up Jeremiah, I look at how God God instructed us and how we should, should, should give glory. We should not take God's glory. We should give glory. And if we want to give glory, this has going to be. Jeremiah chapter 9, 23. Thus says the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which has led the loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, say the Lord. This is our glory. Glory in the understanding of the Lord and not by your power, strength, or mind. No, that's not what God wants. And that's why the world is coming unto us this morning. Because many great people have been pulled down by overestimation. Many great people have fallen because they overestimate themselves. The devil is an expert in doing this. And he has been an old man in the grave. The devil has had millions of experience. You know, when you are looking for a job and you are carrying 20 years experience or 10 years experience, You'll be lifting your shoulder up. I got experience of 20 years, 10 years. But the man you are dealing with is having millions of experience. This man has been there for millions of years. You can never dance with the devil in the pain moonlight and become successful. It's not possible. Don't even try them. The devil has pulled down a lot of people. And one of the injections he gives is to bring forth self-estimation. He will bring it out and you will think that you are something else. You are something beyond who you are. And it will now incite you against God. I pray that God will give you sensitivity to withdraw from any form of my self-estimation in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as a warning in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, he says, Let him that thinketh his stand there, take a heed, lest he fall. Let him that thinketh his stand there, take a heed, lest he fall. Most times we fall into great temptation and now enter into sin, then into sin or fear into sin because of over self estimation. Self estimation. Let him that think it is that it. Take it. Let him be very careful because he can fall. So we need to be very careful. We need to be very sensitive and stand on our feet spiritually to watch out. The wives of Satan. Satan is a very crafty man and is an old man in the game. He has been there for years. You know, this self estimation of I can handle it, I can handle it, is <laughs> a very bad word. You know that this is dangerous and God has even given you a hint that this thing is very dangerous and you are saying, I can handle it. Then we will tell you, you can handle it. Don't worry, I can handle it. And you know that this will lead to destruction. I can handle it. That is what has destroyed a lot of people over self-estimation. And the moment you are going that way, you can't handle a thing. I got bad news for you, you can't handle a thing. You see, the truth about it is that without God, you can do nothing. And what of God says in the book of Proverbs that those that both they can handle it. Look at the way the word of God sees them. He sees them as boasters. He sees them as boasters in the book of Proverbs chapter 25, verse 14. Whosoever posted himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without prayer. Anybody that posts himself of who he is and that he is not is like a cloud. And when you see cloud, when this place becomes cloud, that people will start packing their shorts, packing their wearies, that it's going to rain. And there's breeze, everybody is running. At the end of the day, if there's no rain, people will cause the cloud and cause the breeze. You say you are empty. You just came to frighten us. That's exactly what happens to people. I can handle it. I can handle it. Move away. You can't handle a thing. Be careful. Be very sensitive. God is warning us this morning. That was what destroyed brother, brother Samson. Brother Samson was a man that threw, that threw caution to the wind. He had all the red flags coming. But he believed he could handle it. And he could not handle it. 
because there is nothing you can handle without God. In the book of Judges chapter 16, if you go through that place, you see that Delilah did not mind sword. Delilah did not, did not hide her mission to Samson. Delilah told Samson and said, Samson, tell me where your power is. I want to harm you. Tell me where your power is. I want to hurt you. Tell me where your power is. I want to, I want to make sure that I deal with you. Delilah did not hide anything from Samson. And Samson believed he could handle it. He believed. The Philistines came to him. The elders of the Philistines came to Judges chapter 16, verse 5. And the elders of the Philistines came unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see where his great strength lies. And by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him and afflict him. And we will give thee every one of us 1100 pieces of silver. And the latter said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, where did thy strength and great light? Where will thou mightest be bound to afflict thee? It is not, it is not, the latter came straight, I want to kill you. Tell me where your power is, I want to kill you. But Samson overestimated himself and believed you could handle it. Say, Look at this girl, look at this girl. Me when they kill thousands of people, look at this girl. What do I have to nonsense? And, and it was he was trying to play with devil in the pale moonlight. It's very dangerous. Just like believers, you know what is good for you. You know that this is against the will of God. You see people that you know that these people do not believe in God. And you are mingling with them. You think you will handle it. You know that somebody is a drug addict. You know that somebody is a drunkard and you still befriend the person that can handle it. Ah, it's a friend, I mean the controller. Or you see somebody that wants to marry a believer, especially girls. They want to marry a man because they are filled with infatuation or because of the man's money. They say, don't you know that this man is an unbeliever? He say, ah, I will convert him. It's just a matter of time. I will convert him. Well, the moment you start marrying now, I will convert him. And before you know it, the same woman that wants to convert, before you know it, she, has, she don't wear a job. She has become a larger. She went to convert and she got converted. Or you see then they will start now, they become idolatry that the day they are doing a, 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 a salad or they are doing any traditional, you see her, she will be the one that will be in charge. I can handle it. That was how some say misses. And Delilah, not just once, not twice, but later Delilah got him. And the same thing Delilah said happened to him. They are afflicted him, they are bound him, they are afflicted him. I pray that God will give us spiritual sensitivity to be able to overcome every plan and strategy and pit of the devil in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. You're supposed to be checking your spiritual life the way you check your blood pressure and sugar level. Wake up in the morning, you check your spiritual life. How is my spiritual life today? If you are checking it like that, you will not be taken on words. If you are checking your spiritual life steady, there is no way that you will fall into the pit of Satan. Because you will be very sensitive. But wake up and think like Samson that the power is still there. See what's happening? The Philistines are there. I see why you are hurting. Is it why you are here? You are, you are, you are, you are jittering. Don't mind them. I will deal with them the way I used to do it. I want to say he did not know that the power of God is no more with him. The power of God had departed from him. And that was how Brother Samson became a puppet that they were using to grind corn. They plop into eyes, which are supposed to be vision. They destroyed the vision before they destroyed the vision there. And the whole Samson was in the camp of the Philistines, grinding corn for women. What an apparition. I pray your destiny will not be ambushed in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. The word of God advises us there are sins that you walk away from. There are sins that you avoid. But there are sins you have to run away from. You flee. If you try to run away from a sin, you're supposed to flee. If you try to, to walk away or try to avoid, you'll be trapped by that sin. The Word of God made it very, very clearly unto us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. When it comes to the issue of sin or fornication, the Word of God says, flee, not avoid. Flee. 
1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 Flee fornication for everything that a man doeth is without the money. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. He did not say wrong, he did not say avoid. Flee. I think the person that understands this scripture very well was Joseph. Flee. The word of God said that the 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 the, 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 the madam of the house in the book of Genesis chapter 39, you read 10 to 12. Every day the woman was on Joseph. Every day, day by day, the woman was mounting pressure on Joseph. Day by day, Joseph was trying to avoid it. Joseph was trying to avoid her. A day came that Joseph did not avoid her again. Joseph, Jacob, Joseph did what? He fled. That was what saved him. Flee. Don't overestimate yourself. Flee. And also, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14, when it comes to issue of idolatry, the word of God told us who flee from idolatry. Said the same thing when they get in contact with you, they will pollute the person with their measure. And the person will become nonsense in the presence of God. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 14. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee. Run away. God is a jealous God. Anything that takes the glory of God, it will go and destroy such a thing. God does not even compromise in making sure he destroys anything that has to do with his glory. Flee. Don't think you can handle it. You have told them you are a Christian in the town. But when they want to do something in the village, they will tell you, eh, we don't need you now. Just send money. We did not say you should go to shrine. Everybody is doing it here. Just send your money. Your money is what we need. It's just 200 naira. Is it not 1,000? Can't you afford it? Bring money. And you think you can handle it? You never make up your mind to tell them. And you now send that money before you know it. Your business has closed. Everything has closed and you are now bombarding God. God, where are you? We need to watch out. Don't think you can handle a lot of things. Stay clear and make sure that you take your stand concerning issues that are very pertinent and imperative. I pray that God will open our eyes in the name of Jesus. And the word of God, one last book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 10 to 30, says, Be not be deceived. Let nobody deceive you. Evil communication corrupts good manner. Goat, when do they chop yam? If you follow goat, when they chop yam, that goat must chop yam. In fact, as the tested that even lion, a lion that was bred in the midst of goat was eating grass. You will grow up and saw goats eating grass. You follow them until the day he realized, the lion realized that, that it did not belong to the, the family of goats when he saw another lion coming to torment them. That was the day they, and the, the lion realized that it was not a herbivorous animal, that it was, it was a carnivorous animal, that his flesh that lion ate. Your association will determine where you end up your life. And I want to tell you something. A lot of people have ended up, when we go to prison, to go and visit people in prison, if you hear some certain testimony, you know that wherever your friends are is where you will be. So people are in prison not because they committed anything, but because they must be where their friends are. So when their friends committed, they came to pick them and they pick all of them. And best of the same feather flock together. So they have to flock together in prison whether they have committed such a thing or not. It's only God that knows that they will not commit it. But every human being, according to the law, looks at the environment and the local civil where the crime was committed, who were involved, which people were found with the criminal. So you need to go and talk to God so that God will be able to talk to the judge that you are innocent. I know it's a long process. And besides, sometimes when we are here, we don't hear anything. When we go to prison and they start saying, ah, the law, eh? and I do that and tell them, you are here. And now you are here, you can listen. You know, human beings that you tell, I want to preach to you, will tell you I'm very busy. If you go to prison and meet with them, they are not busy. You talk to them two hours, they are still listening and say, go ahead. 
Sometimes I'll tell them, I'm not going ahead, I'll go home. You are here, I'm not a prisoner. Say where you are, let me go home. If you have heard what I told you, or what people say, you have not been here. I was at the Jehovah prison sometime to preach. I met some I was preaching in Jehovah prison. And when I was there, for two hours I was talking to them, they were asking me questions. Three hours I was there. When the last person asked questions, I said, I'm leaving. They said, ah, we will have plenty of questions. I said, keep your questions. I'm not a prisoner. I come to visit you. I'm going home. When you were outside, if you are here anywhere, you will not be here. Maybe when I have time again to visit prison, I'm not a prisoner. I will come back and talk to you. We should watch out. 13 verse 20 of the book of Proverbs says that he that walketh with the wise shall be wise. But companion of fools shall be what? Shall be destroyed. If you don't want destruction, don't walk with fools. Don't think you can handle it. They are telling you that that guy is a criminal. And you think that they are stupid by telling you he's a criminal. The day they will catch him, they will catch you. And there's something about God. If God, if God cannot reach you outside, He will make sure He reach you inside. So you choose where God will meet you. I pray we will not choose to be inside where God will meet us in the name of Jesus. So we should not overestimate ourselves. Okay? The word of God is coming to us tonight is a caution. It's a great caution. Now we should watch out. We should watch out our lives and be very sensitive. The truth is that nobody will say, I enter into sin. I don't know if it was a sin. It's a lie. It's a lie. You see, any sin you enter was a calculated attempt. There is nobody that enters into sin and you don't know that what he or she wants to do or she has done or she's what she is doing is a sin. It's not true. It's a lie. 16. If you go to the book of John chapter 16, verse 13, the word of God says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that shall I do. And when he was talking about 16, verse 13, how big, when this, the spirit of truth is called, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall speak of he shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will always whisper to you, this thing you are going to do is bad. This thing you are going to do will destroy you. This is a sin. Then you will not shun the Spirit of God and say, Sure, leave me alone. And the Holy Spirit is a gentle spirit and a quiet spirit will leave you. But don't call him when you don't enter. Because it's a calculated attempt. So we must make sure that we do not enter into the trap of the wicked. And any time we have opportunity of doing anything for God or in spiritual seeing ourselves as being privileged to do so. Because nobody is indispensable in the presence of God. When Moses thought that he was too indispensable, God told him, He said, You are finished. And Moses was thinking, I am an intercessor, I'm going back to God, I will intercede. One day Moses came to God to intercede. God said, Don't ever talk to me concerning this topic. On intercession. Don't ever pray this prayer again. I'll kill you before the time I say I'll kill you. I'm going to say no problem. The one who will take over from me, he said, I'll prepare Joshua. Joshua is ready and the that. I will put your spirit inside Joshua. And let me put that same spirit that makes you expert. Nobody is indispensable. Everything we are doing in God's presence is a privilege. And that's why we should not overestimate ourselves. Everything we are doing is a privilege. And if you check the gospel book of Luke chapter 17, verse 10, Jesus Christ made a point very clear there that when we finish even the great work, we think that it's a great work, we should even say that we are. Look at look at let me let, let me not conclude. Let me see what Jesus said. 17 verse 10. So likewise, he, when you should have done all those things which I commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. We should say it. We are even unprofitable servants. What we have done all that I say we should do. That is humility and that's how to get the grace and, and, the, and the best that God has for us. And the word of God is warning us today, don't overestimate yourself. That's the word of coming on top of us today. Because the beginning of the downfall is to 
incite and inject pride and overestimation. Satan has that testimony in the book of Ezekiel. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, if you read 12 to 18, you see how Satan overestimated himself. He was a false victim of overestimation. And that's why he's using that weapon today against the people. And they now thought within himself that he was so beautiful because was, the, the beauty was so much. The beauty entered the head. And he thought in himself to overtake God and began to think that he would be like God. And God brought him so low that he became one of the, the, the dregs of the kingdom. Even the angels. That's why he was not afraid of Michael. When he met, when he met Gabriel, he, he hijacked Gabriel inside the cloud there where he was trying to pass. When Gabriel was passing to bring prayer requests of Daniel, Satan was not afraid of I, 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 Gabriel. He heard Gabriel. Gabriel told that Daniel that Satan held the captive for some days, for three weeks. That it was Angel Michael that God sent, the warring angel that came and saved him. Satan was the second in command in God before God put him where he belonged. Overestimation. And today, you see people, what you can see that is moving around us now is pride. Overestimation. People don't fear God again. People don't have any, that fear that people have to be there as God. Everybody thought now that they are equal to God. Some people are even shunning God, shunning even the word of God. Over self-estimation. And that is destruction because Satan was a false victim of over self-estimation. And he is now using it now. He is now a weapon he is using to inject in the life of God's people. So he will pull them down and they will become nothing in the kingdom. I pray we shall not be victims in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be on our feet. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Father, every overestimation, over self-estimation in my life. Evacuate every form of over self estimation in my life. Take it away. Take every self estimation over self estimation, O Lord. Father, Lord, give me spirit of humility. Give me spirit, O Lord, Father, to be able to walk with you, to rely on you. Give me spirit to understand that without you I can do nothing. That I might be able to rely on your word, rely on you. Take away every spirit of pride over self estimation in my life and take it away from as many as those that this woman will come unto. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus Christ, we must pass on and pray. Amen. If you have not met with Jesus Christ, that's the beginning of fall. Anywhere you are, you want to meet with Jesus Christ, we are hearing God's word this morning. Now, bow down your heads and begin to confess your sins and ask Jesus to enter into your life and take up to charge over your life as personal and as Savior. God never created us to be independent. We are all dependent on God. Ask God to forgive me. Ask Jesus to be your personal Lord and take over and forgive your sins this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, pray. If you want to have Jesus in your life as personal and Savior, say this prayer of faith after you say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me at the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Thank you for saving me. From my sins and from Satan to serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you, Father. Your grace has brought this world. Let the same grace preserve them till the day of your coming in the name of Jesus. And let your fire encamp around about them, O Lord, and deliver them from every form of self over self estimation to the glory of your name. That the day you will come, none of us shall be found wanting in your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ, we must pray for them. We are praying. Amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name.